Hello everyone and welcome to Sky Scholar. With this video, I would like to return briefly to thermodynamics and the concept of intensive and extensive properties. We had discussed these concepts earlier in these videos and I urge you to return to them if you need a refresher. That is because today I wish to discuss gravitational thermodynamics. This field of physics was invented once astronomy came to understand that their equations violated the rules of classical thermodynamics relative to intensive and extensive properties. So how did this confusion begin? We touched on it briefly in this video. It all started when Jonathan Homer Lane used the ideal gas law to estimate the internal temperature of the sun in the late 1800s. According to Lane's analysis, as a gaseous mass collapsed on itself, its temperature will rise. This is known as Lane's law. However, the idea was a violation of the first law of thermodynamics. A system cannot do work upon itself and thereby increase its own temperature. But when a theoretical gaseous mass collapses, this is exactly what happens. The system essentially undergoes self-compression. The temperature increases with decreasing radius. This equation for the temperature of a star was first promoted by Eddington, Jeans, and Chandrasekhar. Yet if these authors had paid attention, they would have noticed that their equation constituted a violation of thermodynamic principles. According to the zeroth and second law of thermodynamics, temperature must be intensive. But as I mentioned in my APS talk, this expression for temperature is being governed by mass, an extensive property, and by radius, which is neither extensive nor intensive. The other symbols all represent constants. As a result, this expression by Eddington, Jeans, and Chandrasekhar is not valid, and physics should have rejected it years ago. But the problem was never tackled. If they would have paid attention, thermodynamics was stating that stars could not be self-gravitating masses. The only solution was to recognize that they were made from condensed matter. So what happened as a result? The formation of gaseous stars from gravitational collapse continued to be advocated despite violations of the laws of thermodynamics. This led to the idea that a star can continue to self-compress. White dwarfs and neutron stars became viewed as highly compressed objects, concepts which are very likely to be false as you will learn when we begin discussing stellar evolution. Then came black holes. As with gaseous stars, black hole equations did not result in a temperature which was intensive and an entropy which was extensive. The temperature of a black hole is inversely related to its mass and thereby can never be intensive. Conversely, its entropy is related to the area of the event horizon. But that area is equal to 4 pi r square, where r is a Schwarzschild radius equal to 2 gm divided by c squared. As a result, the entropy of a black hole is related to the square of its mass, and that can never be extensive, as extensive properties must be additive. Both of these expressions are non-physical. So again, what do the leaders in physics do? Rather than state, okay Houston, we've had a problem here, they ignored the warning signs and tried to work their way around them by inventing gravitational thermodynamics. They tried to argue that entropy need not be extensive and that the temperature of a system need not be intensive. Yet this moved astrophysics outside the realm of the physical sciences. The temperature of a system must always be intensive because to state otherwise invalidates the use of all physical and laboratory evidence which must be applied in astrophysics. The problem goes even further. That is because the equation for gravitational redshifts also violates the rules of thermodynamics. First, consider that gr the gravitational redshift z sub g is equal to the recessional velocity divided by the speed of light. In turn, this is said to be equal to gm divided by rc squared. In this expression, c is the speed of light, g is the universal gravitational constant, m is the mass of the object producing the redshift, and r is its radius. Now remember that the velocity must be intensive. However, if velocity is isolated on the left by cancelling out the contribution from the speed of light, then you can see that velocity is not intensive in this expression. 
That is because mass is extensive and R is neither extensive nor intensive. As a result, the equation for gravitational redshift has a problem thermodynamically. Velocity must always be an intensive property. In the end, the problem for physics comes in not recognizing that the potential energy within a thermodynamic system can play no role in determining its temperature. Just consider the equation for potential energy associated with two masses. You can see in this expression that the potential energy is not extensive. The right of the expression depends on two masses and on the separation between them, and that can never be extensive. Thermodynamically, potential energy is not like kinetic energy. Consider that kinetic energy can be simply expressed as equal to one half mv squared. In this expression, velocity is intensive, but mass is extensive, and as a result, kinetic energy, unlike potential energy, is always extensive. There is a difference between these two relative to the role they play in thermodynamics. The energy relevant in thermodynamics is the kinetic energy of motion of individual atoms, for instance. It has nothing to do with potential energy. Potential energy is just that, potential. It may never come to contribute to the thermodynamics of the system, and that is where the error comes in. It is the energy that can be used in defining temperature which is central to thermodynamics. Potential energy is irrelevant to that problem, and that is why gravitational thermodynamics has no place in physics. The surest proof is that all the equations which result from its inclusion violate the rule that temperature must be intensive and entropy extensive. As I mentioned before, astrophysics has ignored the importance of intensive and extensive properties in many of their equations, and these ideas render much of astrophysics invalid. Again, one cannot do science and at the same time permit that an entire discipline stands in violation of thermodynamic principles. If you enjoyed the video today, support the channel with a like. Subscribe for more videos as we look more closely at the sun, the stars and beyond. Comments are always welcome down below, and I'll see you soon on our next video.